Yeah, I know he's not. Oh, crazy. Crazy. <laughs> my job's not. <laughs> 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 so you, you can continue the clapping that you started doing then. Yeah, and then you start. And then you join in. And then you guys come in. You too. Here we go. We're doing another little bit more. We're doing another little bit more. Keep going. Please welcome to the stage. Come on. Up, 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 up. Who? Angus Brown. hit at home. My wife went to Indonesia recently to the middle of the jungle to go and help teach disadvantaged street kids English so they can get better careers when they get older. Right? Now, I didn't go. And the second question that people ask after they say, where's your wife? And you say that she went to the jungle in Indonesia to go and help disadvantaged street kids learn English so they can have a better career <laughs> later in life is, why didn't you go? And I don't have a good answer. I've got Netflix. Uh, I like to stand on stage in front of strangers and talk about my penis. That's it. She went over there to help youths and it fucking ruined me. And I say now, the jungle in Indonesia, because I used to say she went to Bali and everyone went, Bali? Fucking party! And I thought the same thing. No, it's quite upsetting. Right? But I initially gave her shit for wanting to go and help people in a foreign country sort of not live a horrible life. And so she said, I'm going to go volunteer in Bali. And I went, oh, fucking what? You're going to hang out with all the bogans and just just drink beer and just hang out in your shorts and your thongs all day. And she's like, no, 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 actually, she started to explain, but I'd stop listening. Because in my head, all I could think about was the Bogan volunteer, like just some like guy from Perth who rocks up at the end of the day. She's like, fucking mate, she'll seen it, just fucking cured this guy's cataract, saw his dirt his face for the first time, ever fucking cried like a baby. Check this out, 80 t-shirts for fucking six bar, one. <laughs> so what I learned my wife went away is I'm not a nice person. I, I just... All these fucking horrible habits that I had when I was younger came back. Like, I've been married for six years, so like bad Angus just got buried, but when she left, it, he just flared up. Like, dark, like, I get angry for no reason at stuff that is not worth getting angry about. Like, if something serious happens, uh, like someone's racist, I don't go, oh, I'm fucking, I'll just go, oh, that's a shame. He's probably, he's probably from a low socioeconomic area. He probably had to leave school early to go and get a trade. Probably work with some older guys. Probably started saying some things they were saying just to fit in. He probably doesn't know what he's really saying. Or butter cup. Or <laughs> but if I put a piece of bread in my toaster and the lever doesn't go down, I just fucking freak out. You fucking piece of shit! Why the fuck would you? You want to The only thing you have to be. Why would somebody build something that doesn't fucking. And my wife, if she's there, will go, it's alright, we can have some cereal. And I go, it's not a fucking point, Jessica! I want some fucking toast and stuff before I can go, well, I'll make eggs. And I go, what are we gonna put them on? We don't have any fucking. Toast! <laughs> Fuck the power monster. <laughs> I'm a dick! I'm a dick! <laughs> so I'm not allowed out of the country, that's why I think, that's my reason. If I went there, I'd just embarrass us. The, the, the closest I got, I did, I did travel recently, I went to Adelaide, so fucking. Yeah! But I had fun, which surprised the shit out of me. I got there. Right? And my very first night of doing shows, Someone who was sitting in the very front row, like where you guys are, was just really enjoying my set, and I admit it wasn't very good. I did a joke, and the punchline to the joke was circle jerk. That's the high quality end of my gag. Like, and that, and I, I said it, and I said the punchline, and she in the front row just went, oh, that's fantastic. I'm going to take that to my work meeting on Monday morning. I'm like, ooh. Do you know what a circle jerk is? She went, nah. But it sounds really productive and inclusive. <laughs> well, okay, so I stopped and I explained it to her and I said, do you still want to take Circle Jerk to your work meeting on Monday morning? And in front of everyone, she just went, I stand by my previous statement. <laughs> what a fucking legend. I judge all that alone by that one chick. That one is a top bloke. I fucking like <laughs> Like it's, it's, it, was, well, it was great except for one little bit. Right? I was spending a lot of time riding a bike from the place I was staying to the venue I was performing in. And I don't do that a lot in Melbourne. I don't ride a bike because I'm successful and I own a car like an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking 10 years old. Right? But I was riding a bike sitting in my car and I noticed that there was discomfort in my, under, my undercarriage. I don't know what to call it. Like my junk. 
And it was, I didn't know what to do about it, but I remember seeing ads a few years ago saying that women need to do like regular self exams. And I thought maybe that's the same for, for guys. So I did an exam and I found a lump. And, and I know for most people, like if you find a lump on one of your testicles, that's like a blood runs cold, life before the ice kind of horror moment. But if you're a comedian, that's next year's show. <laughs> so I just got really excited that I didn't have to come up with all this new material. I started writing the whole show while I was in Adelaide. I immediately decided I didn't want to go to a doctor in Adelaide because it was Adelaide and that was the end of my reasoning. I thought, I'll wait, I'll wait till I get back to Melbourne. There's a man there who's already seen my penis and had an awkward conversation about it. I'll just save it for that doctor. So I, just, I didn't go to the doctor, but I had three weeks of doing gigs just thinking up my whole show. Like I came up with titles for it. I was going to call it Angus Brown Has a Ball. <laughs> or if that didn't go for I was going to go with sack full of memories. <laughs> so, I, so I had three weeks of like coming up with this show, and then I got back to Melbourne, and I went to my doctor, and I was like, G'day Jerry, check it out, and I just, yep, there it is. And he went, okay, cool, and he kind of fumbled around, and we'll, I'm saying fumbled, because that's what he did. Like, if you imagine looking for an orange in a sack full of potatoes, he's just like, nah, 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 oh, that's a bit different. And then he went, oh, I can feel something, you've got a protrusion. And I remember he said that word, because it's not fucking funny. And I went, mate, I'm trying to write a show here. You need to come up with something medically hilarious, you freak. And he's like, no, there's a definite protrusion there. You need to see a specialist. So he sent me to a specialist. And the guy was like a 28-year-old Indian student who just graduated. And he was really nervous. And I walked in, he was all out of smiles. And he looked at the clipboard of the job he had to do. And he went, oh, Mr. Brown. And he went, oh. all right. Lie down, and he laid down, like laid me down, and then he started getting the gloves on. He's like, you need to pull your pants down, you need to grasp your penis in your hand, and you need to sort of stretch it up towards. That's ambitious. We'll say that. <laughs> you have to stretch it up. You have to make it smooth, and then he got this like gel on his glove. And if you imagine like this is my testicle, and that's his hand. Right when he was about there, he just really suddenly said, "Oh, by the way, this cream is quite warm." <laughs> and run the warming lubrication gel on my testicles, which is in no way unpleasant, especially when you're holding your own penis like that. And then you got the device that checks to see if you have ball cancer, and it's an ultrasound machine, which is what you use to check for babies, which I thought was ironic, because I didn't think I'd be having any. And then you jammed it in there, and the fucking thing vibrates. So I'm sitting there going, this is the most amazing thing ever. I'm going to be in a red shed in front of a 28-year-old Indian man. This is a comedy goal. And I knew it was a horrible situation, but future Angus was going to love it so much that I got really excited for future Angus and I let out a sound and it wasn't like, it was nothing sexual, I was going, oh, and he didn't like that. So he stopped, he said, I can't find it, you'll have to show me. So I tried to grab it and show him, but I don't know if you've ever tried to grab a well-lubricated testicle, and so now, 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 now. And then he's like, just point, so I did, but it was wet, so I sleep, and I just, I went inside a bit, and I didn't. And then eventually he just went, you know what, never mind, I'll just take some photos. And he got a different device and took photos. And I said, why the fuck did you do that at the start? <laughs> and then he put them up on his little screen and he looked and he went, there's, yeah, there's definitely a protrusion. I can see it in the photo. And I went, that fucking man. And he said, yeah, there's a, quite a hefty protrusion actually. And uh, you're fine. And I'm like, what? And he said, yeah, you're fine. And I'm like, oh, oh. is that full of memories? <laughs> he said, what? I said, I don't think you understand, I've written a whole show. <laughs> and he said, I don't think you understand, you don't have testicular cancer. And I left being the first person ever to be really upset to be totally healthy. <laughs> but the moral of the story is, don't come see next year's show, it runs at about three and a half minutes. <laughs> he also said I was leaving, uh, you fucked up mate, you shouldn't have called it Sapful of Memories, you should have called it Scrotal Eclipse of the Heart. I thought, fuck, it is better. <laughs> My name's Angus Brown, I'll see you guys later.